you got up there. <laughs> Not the first time you got up something this evening, I'm sure. So I take you sit there, Simon. Everyone wants to see you sit down. And then you can just get back up again. And then just, no, okay, fair enough. They're too tight, I was going to say. Fair enough, all right. No, no, I mean, you're gonna, I'll get in, I'll get in here and sit next to my friend so I can watch you get in nice and fantastic What? What's that out? Hi, you, that this was going to be a money check coming out. I apologize for the amount of community you see behind me throughout the night. No, no, it doesn't. Flowers, and that's a bit awkward. Uh, you will be apologizing for the lack of nudity, I think. Oh, there we go. No, that's more nudity than I was expecting tonight, I have to say. Wow. I what ruined, a, I've ruined this. What a big point that is. Oh my god. You have not ruined anything with that Definitely photo. Definitely Alright, Simon, we're going to talk a little bit about your life this evening. And the first thing I want to know about is uh, your childhood. Where did you grow up? What did you do? What was life like? What brought you to be this big megastar that you are now? That feels like an intervention. Let me talk about your childhood rather than a tattoo. Um, <laughs> My, my child was a fantastic. I was born in Melbourne, you might have not heard of it. It's a chic town in rural Australia, famous for the world's largest marina. For those of you playing the room, that's a male sheep. Um, I grew up in Wollongong and came to Sydney where I met your lovely self when I was about 18, and we don't want to talk about the years that followed that one. And yeah, eventually I moved overseas to pursue a career in bobsleigh, surprisingly. Yeah, I was shocked. <laughs> I'm sorry. I was so shocked when I saw that you were doing that. I was like, of all things you can choose, Bob Slang is yeah. like really like left of center and out there. How did that happen? Well, well, I played rugby since I was four years old. I was, I was just a short little fat kid, and I used to. And my only tactic was growling at people, and <laughs> I ended up quitting rugby because, as a lot of you in this room, uh, I'm assuming you're a lot of you're gay. Uh, yep, yep, yep. yep. Um, <laughs> um, as a lot of you might know, sport is not exactly the most welcoming place for gay men. Um, so I ended up quitting, eventually I joined the comics, um, and through them I got the urge to be an athlete again. So I moved overseas actually to play rugby. That's correct, for the um, Steelers? No, 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 so no, moving here too. It was one of those heterosexual teams, you might have heard of them. Um, they're, they're not as fun, but they exist. Um, so basically I ended up playing two games for the Calgary Canucks. Um, through them, I was recruited. Um, I had a guy tap me on the shoulder after a game, and he was like, you're, you're really strong and you're fast, but your endurance is not quite up there. That's a nice way of saying you're a lazy asshole. Yes, yes. Um, I scored three tries in 10 minutes, though, so I'll, I'll take credit for that. Um, and through that, he ended up being the pilot for the Australian Volkswagen team in Sochi. Um, and it's been about 12 months training full-time and working full-time, which I'll tell you, is held 16 hour a day, seven days a week. Um, and eventually I was gifted the opportunity to try out for the Australian development team. What's the Australian development team? Well, you don't just jump into like World Cup races or the Olympics, right. you have to develop as a box player because it might not surprise you, not many Australians get much practice at, <laughs> at box yeah. So what they do is they bring you on um, and then you have to obviously hit certain sprint goals, strength goals, um, craziness goals. Um, Cold temperature goals. So, like in, bob in bobsledding, like on cool running. Sorry, that's all I know about bobsledding. Did you have something lucky that you took with him, like your lucky air goal? Did you what, like what, when you? What's cool runnings? Cool runnings. It's a bobsledding team. Never heard of it. Okay. Well, that makes reasons stupid. Okay, so of course I've heard of cool runnings. Um, I was a bobsledder. Um, so the only thing I did really was I was very religious at the top of the track. I do, I do my cross, but just pray to God that I wouldn't die. Um, but funnily enough, I was very less religious at the bottom of the track and I didn't die. Um, but that's the luckiest thing I went with, was fake religion. As fast as it looks? Is it fast as it looks? Um, yes, so the fastest track in the world is Whistler, and you, we got up to about 150 kilometers an hour. Oh, man. Um, when you go up speeds like that, as a brake, you don't really know what's going on. You can kind of feel if this lead's kind of if it's sideways or upside down, especially. Um, but if you're going 151 kilometers an hour on a piece of ice, you know that if you crash it, you're fucked. Yeah, yeah. Fortunately, we didn't crash in Whistler, but many times in Calgary. Right, and you just said uh, a brakeman? A brakeman, that was my job. That was your job. Yeah, was so I'll, I'll explain a brakeman. We do more than break, for those of you playing at home. Uh, so our job, so basically, well, they, I, I'm, you've all watched Cool Rain as I was shooting. Um, my job is to get that bobsleigh going as fast as I can over the first 30, 50 metres. Um, a sled generally weighs 
about 200 kilos, and we like to get it over 50 meters within five seconds. Oh wow! Whoa! And then you jump in and you crazy. stare at your crotch for a bit. Yep. Um, you tap walls and then you get to the bottom, and then you then you put brakes on. Right. Right. Yeah, you think much like your sex life for that. Yeah, you'd be very, you very surprised how flexible you come come with G force. She's pushing you into your own crutch. You you get into positions you didn't think you would be able to. And can you do that out, off, off the slide? Oh, no, I, I, no, no, no. Uh, she's getting it off. Yeah, <laughs> she's, she's done it back. <laughs> From trying, I'm sure. Uh, <laughs> Sorry, darling. Uh, you were part of the UK Steelers, which was the first rugby gay rugby club in the world. So they formed in. So basically, I retired from professional sport because I was bigger sport, and then I ended up joining the rugby team. Um, and through them, so they were, they, they were formed in 1995. Um, we ended up playing a season with them and a big role. Wow. All right. So Steelers, that would have been so much fun. So I'm a lesbian, I should know all the shit about sport, but I don't. So, world hottest man. That's all it says. And, and the best thing is I'm still reigning. because I. Oh, that's reason, exciting. For some reason they cancelled the competition after I won. Um, <laughs> well, tell us more. Tell I, us more. I, I think there was no one else competing with me. And, uh, it was basically Attitude Magazine used to do um, an annual vote, which was voted for by the public. Um, on who the world's hottest man was at the time. And it's kind of a shit thing you don't want to win because people would literally come up and look at you and be like, do you know you were? You? Like, I'd, I'd much rather have come like 10th. Yeah. Not that I think I've had a great year, but like, I'd much rather have come 10th just so you didn't have like Karens and like your friends even be like, fuck you and you're like, oh, that's me. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, that's just popular at the time. <laughs> I've done a few articles and people voted for me, sorry. Yeah. Well, you did them, you're gorgeous. Thank you are absolutely stunning and a very talented young man. Um, so after that, travelling the world, being famous, doing your body sledding, being in the UK, being a professional sports athlete, you came back home. I did. First of all, what made you come back home and how did you feel about that? So my visa expired. Um, <laughs> and my lovely partner, if you just... Very easy, very easy, he's also gorgeous. Yeah, actually, he wouldn't marry me, so I couldn't stay. Right, so <laughs> that's why I'm back, so we can either thank him or hate him. Um, no, so um, you get to the point where you've been overseas for it was six, seven years at that time, and I knew it, it was time to come home. I missed out on seeing my nieces and nephews grow up for a majority of their childhood, their friends I hadn't seen for that entire time. As fun as living in a nomadic lifestyle where, I think I'm very lucky to have travelled where I have and around the world. Um, there's no place like home. Such a stereotypical thing to say, but it's just nice to be back where you're from and where you grew up. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, I'm kidding, I hate it. No, so you don't. You love us. Shut you me. love us. Uh, so, uh, I'm going to go off topic here. Yes. So, I don't know how scripted you are this evening, but I don't think you are at all. But, um, if you were to pick one thing around the world that you loved more than the sports that you're playing, like you, one of your best memories, what would it be? Obviously, meeting my partner. Oh, uh, but really, um, <laughs> um, I just, I just think having the being an athlete, you, you, you don't have much money, but you can kind of get to travel everywhere. And I think I remember driving through like backwoods places in the middle of America, and I refused to sleep on these road trips just because I knew that I might never get to see a farm in Oregon or. A, or a crackhead in Montana, and <laughs> like, you gotta take these things in. And so, I, the entire road trip for like 20, 20 hours, I just spent the entire time awake, and we used to have coaching staff, and they'd be like, you can sleep, you know? And I was like, yeah, no. <laughs> but I, I, I wanna see, like, I wanna see all this stuff. You wanna see real life. I actually remember one story from the road trip is, because, as you all know, the US is quite big, and we'll be traveling from truck stop to truck stop when we refuel, and it was the only chance I'd get Wi Fi. So, it, being a single gay man, I'll check grinder <laughs> every single time. But because it's the middle of nowhere, you'd literally drive three hours and you'd also get the same person on grinder, they just further away. And I was like, 
you poor bastard, you have to drive five hours to get a route. Okay. Well, if it was you messaging me, I would do that. Yeah, just following our banner. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. <laughs> um, so, Simon, so, tell me how you cope, uh, you know, doing all of that is very, very exciting. It's amazing. Um, through all of that, you've got your hundreds of thousands of followers on Instagram and Facebook, and you're meeting incredible people the entire time. And you come back home, and then all of a sudden, you're just Simon again. How did you cope with that? Um, Actually, I, I discussed it recently on a, on a great podcast I was on, as you can see, it ended by the, the Wings and Bat called Behind the Uniform. Um, just wanted to plug it there, make sure you give it a listen. Um, but basically, it, it's, it, it's insulting. Um, you kind of, you live on this high, and, and as an athlete, you don't, you don't think about anything beyond being an athlete, because it's like, it's like if you're studying to be a doctor, you don't think about anything else besides what you're doing and getting your doctorate. Um, so when I was an athlete, all I thought about was going to the Olympics, and I didn't which also sucked, but, and then, then all of a sudden I found myself sleeping on mum's spare couch in, in Goulburn, and as I mentioned, largest marina in the world. Um, and I found, it, it was probably one of the toughest couple of months of my life, and it's hard to say it's tough when you've, you've spent years traveling, and people don't get it, but it's, it's, it's called, um, it's called the doctor's back. It's just an adjustment disorder where you get the same, you get the same issues as depression and anxiety, but it's just because you're not adjusting. Um, but it was a tough The huge come down, like seriously, being so, you know. No, like, worse than one after my about. Yeah. It just, it, never, <laughs> it just never ended. Yeah. Um, how did you cope with that though? Like, what did you um, So did I, you I, had, I had to go speak to a doctor, um, and the doctor was like, you need to get back into doing your normal routine. You are someone who is an athlete, you need to get back to training and those kind of things. And I was, and I remember last year when I went back, I posted a photo and as everyone knows what social media is like, is you spend the entire time putting up a facade of someone who you want the world to see. For example, not that photo, but... <laughs> but, 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 but all together. And at the time I found myself posting just photo shoot photos, um, obviously overseas and stuff. Um, um, Drink, please. Uh, so I posted Drink a photo off. just saying that this is... This is what you're going through. Like everything you you see of people, don't compare yourself to people on social media because that's not exactly what their lives are like. Totally and, not what they are. <laughs> and everyone has ups and downs. Everyone has shit times, and I was having a shit time at that time. And fortunately, I just I spoke to a doctor, and it's me in my bald say outfit. Still got it. Uh, <laughs> comes out on special occasions. Um, uh, yes, yeah, so I spoke to a doctor, and we ended up just putting things into place and. Then I was very public about it because I just want people to know that people do go through this. Well, you've come out the other end. That's the main thing. Yeah. That's well, cool. I'm here now, I know. I know, right? All right. Do we want to have more questions or do we want to do the raffle? Or... We'll give Simon a little, little rest and he can have a drink. So please grab a drink at the bar. Keep yourself hydrated. We want to make sure that none of you pass out. Fuck my son. But um, <laughs> that happens 
quite a lot. And then I just had to kind of just tap into my lesbian roots and remember who I was, that I was in fact part of the LGBTQI plus size community. And, um, <laughs> that I was okay. And, and I, was, I was in awe of Greg because I know Greg, Greg, Greg uh, Simon, sorry, I don't know who Greg is. I don't know what the name of the song was, but Simon, um, I was in awe of you, Simon, because Simon's not, you're not, you're not a trained actor, you are, and yet you were there on set, you come from an athletic background, and yet not once did he throw a beer at me, and uh, he's played rugby, you didn't defecate in any of the rooms that he filmed in, so I did, but Simon didn't, and you know, he did what every good actor does, he did nothing, and he portrayed... <laughs> He portrayed that role, or what I mean by that, let me clarify, is he portrayed that role with authenticity and honesty, and then come lunchtime, he didn't have any carbs. So most good actors don't have carbs. I had carbs, and it reflected in my performance. So that's what happens. No, no, but you know what was interesting. I can't remember, but there was something we filmed here, which was interesting because I haven't been here since I passed out here. I think 1982. So, was that I was a bit hesitant because Greg asked me, "Do you want to play the mother role?" And I'm like, "Well, that would mean that I had him when I was four." Um, so I was, I was a bit hesitant. But then also, I am part of this wonderful community. I am part of the LGBTQI whatever community. There's a different letter every week, isn't there? But I, I, you know, I, here am I playing this homophobic, heterosexual mother, where in actual fact I'm a homophobic lesbian woman. So, there you go. What a stretch that yeah. must be for yeah. you. I know how difficult that is. <laughs> uh, you so, are absolutely so incredible. Thank you so much. Uh, I don't know, are you a comedian by chance? Is this something that you do for a living? No. Can I, I, I am, but I'm also, Simon is inspired me, and Simon, I, I will say, it, um, jokes aside, um, it was an absolute pleasure to work with you, and you're very, very talented, and Simon is both a model professionally, and just in life, he's someone that we can look up to, and just fucking gawk at to, we can look at him, and Simon, you've done your calendar, and you've inspired me to do a calendar, it's called 2020 Retrospective Portrait Plain Lady Calendar. I'll just give you a bit of a sample. January. 2020. February. March. April. I haven't thought of anything for July, but you've been so delightful. Thank you, uh, Simon. It was so lovely to work with you. And thank you for having me. No problem, ladies and gentlemen. Midnight Shift, Australia Universal, formerly known as Midnight Shift, whatever it's called, Fox Studios. Thank you. Get up and check in. We have a lot, I've learned a lot about you this evening. But I mean, we have like genuinely been friends and known each other for many, many, many years. Before you're famous, before you had your thousands of fans, before your calendars. Um, but kind of roughly around the time that you uh, uh, didn't release that video, that's very exciting. Um, so Simon, my darling, we've talked about all of that exciting stuff. Tell us about some of the things, uh, um, the exciting bits about the calendars, where you shot, what your favourite pictures are, all of that kind of stuff. Um, so the calendar was shot over three photo shoots, pre, mid and the end of COVID. Oh, okay. And by the end, I mean the end for Australia and not Melbourne. Um, basically, before COVID happened, we went out to a lovely waterfall um, and shot the, the cover of the, the calendar, also that one there. Um, I don't know if many of you know, but to, well, for me personally, to be the for my photo shoots, I have to basically dehydrate myself um, to make sure there's no ex excess water on my skin. And, and oh, then, I know what that's like. And then by the end of the shoot, so you spend basically Terrible. you spend like three hours in a in a swampy waterfall and the entire time flexing, and I had to climb out. And I remember at one point I looked to my left and there was a dead eel. So as glamorous as the photos looked, it was 
pretty shit at the time. <laughs> um, we had to climb a rock, like this like rock wall to get out. And I, I said to the photographer, I was like, I'm not going to make it. I haven't, I haven't had a drink of water in two days, but luckily I did, and here I am. Wonderful. They came out excellent, by the way. How do you like the calendars, guys? Have you been buying them? Aren't they lovely? Um, also, you've been ambassador work for BGF and. Any other yeah, how does that go? Do you think, uh, it's fantastic. So I um, I think I've worked with a few kind of, uh, charitable organisations and things this year. Um, it's something something I've done since I retired from Bobsleigh because for me it's like you must you'd be a piece of shit not to have the gay community support you so much when you're when you're achieving something then to turn your back on them when you're when you're not. So I, I, I decided to use the followers that I have and the, the, the profile. It, it's not massive, it's but it's something um, to try and to be an advocate and a, a champion for the causes that like I'm pas passionate about. <laughs> Stop it, maybe for lunch. Um, yeah, so this year, this year I coming back to Australia, I've worked with Bobby Goldsmith Foundation um, and Give Out Day. Um, Give Out Day is, as I mentioned earlier, when one of our representatives from that organisation was here um, on a prize. Um, that's a charitable day, and I think we raised 300,000 oh, people. Wow. Oh, wow. Oh. Oh. The smaller grassroots uh, So uh, these are organisations that generally don't get representation or they don't have the budget to promote and, and, and obviously promote and get your donations and give out days a day where we, we do that for them. Um, this has nothing to do with charity behind me, by the way, I do apologise. Um, and I'm also an ambassador of Bobby Goldsmith Foundation. So Bobby Goldsmith is a charity in Sydney that works with people currently with HIV. Um, that, that involved me going out and meeting their clients and working with them, um, working with companies like Woolworths and my good friends at Lion Nathan. If you can see them just at the back there, I went out and I spoke to both those organisations in the last couple of weeks and it, 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 being able to educate others about HIV and preventative measures and what these charities do is, is, is a big thing for me, but also being able to go out and meet the clients. Um, it's, it's something that we, as a generation, have kind of missed out on. We've missed out on the AIDS crisis. Um, so we, we're kind of being blissfully ignorant to it, because it's not been our problem. And when you go out and you realise that it is our problem, we, we as a community need to support the rest of our community. And then you see people who have been HIV positive for 30 years, right? and you see the effects it has on them. And, you realise that this is what we all should be doing. It's not just me who should be the one up here saying, guys, educate yourself, guys, get behind these charities. Um, we should automatically be part of a community. That's what a community is, is be out there donating, volunteering, selling ribbons, um, just listening to stories and educating ourselves. Yeah. Well, absolutely. Yes. Melanie and I, we have got eight points, so we know exactly uh, what you're talking about. And the struggle, struggle. We've seen it, we've been to places and met all of these incredible people who um, are really survivors, and they have created such an incredible world for us and given up so much. The least that we can do is when they're not feeling their best, look after them. Well, it's those people, um, the gay community have come so far in our lifetimes. Uh, my short 21 years on this earth. Um, <laughs> I, think I, I think I've always known you in 21 years. <laughs> but it's those people and their, their work when during the age crisis and their all this stuff that got us to where we are today. And I, I think we need, need to recognise that by being there for them. Yeah, absolutely. Pay it forward. That's what we say. Pay it forward. All right, Simon. You have over half a million followers on over across all your videos and stuff. Yeah. It is spread out, but that's like a huge fan base. I mean, of course, it's going to be a couple of double ups. You know, I'm following you on everything. Um, first of all, when did that all kind of happen? Was it like a really slow transition, or was it like you woke up one day and all of a sudden, boom, I've done something really great that people started following me? Um, so I, I was a very late like, bloomer when it came to Instagram because I was like, why do people want to see pictures of me? And then, like all gay men, I was desperate for attention. I'm kidding. Uh, <laughs> basically, um, when I made the national team, BuzzFeed had done an article about me, and that's Snowball. And I remember being on tour with your teammates and like being an athlete, everyone just thinks they're better than everyone else, and go to bed after training and competing, and 
Why my clients at home? <laughs> Guess who got 10,000 more followers? <laughs> and they were like, just because I was gay, you tell them they were a bit not so bad at that. Sorry. About that, you know, well, to be fair, you put in the hard yards way before you were a famous sports person. Like, you were hanging out here and at Ark and at Stone, or like you were and doing the hard yards, medical, body lines, Sydney. So, you were everywhere, <laughs> everywhere. Did you have a different name back then? <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, I'm trying to be modern, trying to be hip, hip up with the kids. But you know, you put in the hard yards way before you were like famous, so I, I think you deserve all of that. I, I, know. Know. I was there for most of those. <laughs> I know. Basically, basically that's just everyone that's partied with you, just giving you a quick little follow. Yeah. Now you're a superstar. Um, I love that. So tell us uh, what your plans are going forward. Do you have any? I, I, what I what have are your dreams and no, aspirations for the future? Um, for me, I really want to focus on working with community groups, charities. Um, this is something I find rewarding, actually. I, I now take two days a week from pay work to actually do it because. Thank you to the government for JobKeeper and those, those, those of you who have kept the job pay tax. Um, but, so yeah, I, I've been able to use that in the last, since June, to be able to afford to have time off work to work with charities. And I, that, that has been a lesson for me. Um, I wasn't able to do it in the UK. I was an, I was an ambassador with the Charity Tickets Trust, similar to Bobby Goldsmith and a few organisations over there, the Gay Men's Health Initiative. Um, but now that I've come home, I've been, I'm now fortunately in a position where I can focus more on that. And that's, something I find rewarding and um, it's something I'd definitely like to continue doing into the future. Cool. We are very lucky to have you. We are very lucky to have you, yes. Let's hear again for him, guys. Come on. So, we have time for Audi. Oh, no, what is your favourite photo out of the calendar? If you had to choose one, um, mine's the butt shot. Well, you got yeah, a nice bum. It's <laughs> really, really awkward because, you can, as you can imagine, doing... Um, naked shoot on public beaches is really tough. And I remember, it was actually what we did for DNA a few years ago. The first time I was in DNA, and we were down at like Little Bay Beach. So very, quite, kind of a quiet beach, the sun was going down, and they're like, get naked. And I was like, okay. <laughs> and I remember the family started to walk towards us, and I was sitting there hold, holding my dick, and you could just tell that I was the, they, they, they hate me a lot. You know? <laughs> they're trying not to look, and the husbands are giving me evil glares. And the photographer's like, oh, I just pose this way. And I was like, yeah. <laughs> We're going to get stabbed on the way out? No, I'm not sure that the husband glare was an evil one. More yeah, no, as clear of desire, I guess. He popped everyone in the car and was just going to walk back to make sure it's safe. I'm sure that it was what was going to go on. So, so right now, what we're going to do is open up for the audience. So if there's anyone in the room that is desperate to know anything about Simon, uh, has any questions, Naomi's going to come out. So just pop your hand up. From Olympics back to probably not Olympics in terms of going back into rugby. Well, the awkward thing is I actually never made the Olympics. So, <laughs> thanks for now. Um, we actually, we've actually banned the O word in our household. Um, so basically, I was on the Australian team for two and a half seasons. Um, the season pre-Olympics, I knew that I wasn't going to make the Olympic team to actually go compete at the Olympics. Um, but the transition back to being a professional athlete to a guy who plays rugby on the weekend, drinks beer, and enjoys sport for sport. Um, as I mentioned, you know, there's a long road coming back to Australia, but I'm there now. Um, I'm finally back enjoying rugby. Rugby is something I've played since I was four. Um, so I don't know any girls. My spine, the concussions, the fractured bones, the torn muscles don't really like rugby, but, uh, but I myself enjoy it. What is the most... I forgot the question, sorry. What is the most... What is something that most people in this room don't know about you? Okay. <laughs> no. No, no, I was going to say that I'm not a gay, she's just, yeah, okay, uh, I don't, I don't feel like I'm too rude to you, but um, I'd ask you, but you know too much about me, so I'll take the microphone over here. Um, I don't know, it's tough, I don't know what you know about me. Um, can I answer it for you? No. Let me answer it for you. Go on. Let me answer it. Is it PG? Yeah, of course it is. Let me answer it for you. What happens in the nightclub stays in the nightclubs. What happens at recovery stay at recoveries, ladies and gents. But what I will say is the person you see up there smiling and gorgeous 
uh, is the genuine Simon Dunn. He is just a beautiful person inside and out. He can be an asshole with the right amount of drinks, but can't we all, ladies and gents? But genuinely, when you see him up there smiling, and you get that like little funny feeling in your belly, and then you think, oh my god, I can't wait to get home and jump off to that. That's the real Simon Dunn. Absolutely, it's really, really nice. You should be so proud of everything that you've achieved and you are just an incredible person and a wonderful man. So you've got congratulations. One question that I have for you though, Simon, uh, and um, I'm sure this has happened to you because it happens to me more regularly than I care to admit, stalkers. I get stalkers quite a lot, ladies and gents, and I know it surprises all of you in the room because you're here to look at a hot boy, but drag queens have stalkers. And I have to say that my favourite stalker, I think he's in the room tonight, Con, Con, are you still here? Hello, Con, Wayne Pell is Con. He was my very first stalker, ladies and gents. He was, he followed me from venue to venue, and then it got to a point where I just accept the fact I've got a stalker, and I let him pick me up and drive me to venues and to bookings, so it became a benefit. So Simon, have you had or do you have a stalker? How does it make you feel? And are they as fun as my ones? Um, I've had a few interesting characters follow me over the years. Um, if anyone has read the comments on my social media, that if, if you want to laugh over a few beers, yeah. have a read. I, uh, and they're the ones I don't moderate. Um, but I have had a few just stalk at the point in Canada where we had to get the police involved and get the guy's passport cancelled because he threatened to blow my brain out if I, and not the way you <laughs> would want him to. <laughs> he would threaten to blow my brain out if I didn't reply to him. Um, so we ended up getting his his uh, passport cancelled. Um, but beyond that, it's just the, the usual creepy comments, but if you write something too disgusting, I will talk to you. Um, because my mum does read them. Um, but she's my biggest fan, so she's probably writing them herself. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, definitely, I, I, I do get some interesting characters. Yeah, absolutely. So, you got another question? How many days are we trying to keep a body like that? Um, this week, one. Um, at the end of the year, and we're doing a lot. Um, I'm going to be there at CrossFit, so I will uh, try and aim for my CrossFit session today and the thing I eat after. So, generally twice a day. A um, good week. But the reason I train is because now that I'm on that trip, I like to drink beer and pizza. And I am going to be able to be able to enjoy it over two last time. Hello, Danny. Can people book you to be their own personal trainer? They certainly can. Um, <laughs> just, just not too many people because I'm a busy man. <laughs> well, how would they do that? I don't know what I was saying. So you can book me by the hour. Uh, <laughs> 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 uh, so, <laughs> So generally you can just jump on the website at simondunk.com um, and on there you just send me an email and it's through that. But you're very limited spaces um, because as I mentioned I like to do a lot, a lot of my time to work with charities um, and those sort of things and even though it's volunteer work is not financially rewarding, it's just rewarding for me and I find it more important. And hopefully my lovely boyfriend gets rich and <laughs> money is not an issue. <laughs> And speaking of personal training though, Simon, if there was kind of like one exercise, um, you know, someone, say you're like, I don't know, like, you're just like this really famous drag celebrity in Sydney, and you haven't been dancing as much as you normally know, would, and you put on, I don't know, like, like 5 to 25 kilos over about a six month period, what one exercise would you suggest is the easiest to do that he's going to give them the most weight loss. Um, so, <laughs> stop drinking. Oh! <laughs> so, um, that's why I just said I work out twice a day so I can drink. Um, anyone looking for like train advice, just move. Like, training's not for everybody. People don't want to lift weight. Some people don't want to play squash. Some people don't want to play tennis. I don't want to play basketball. Um, just find something you like and do it. The more you do it, the more weight you'll lose. Great, create good habits. I'm not going to expect someone to come to the gym with me and have me kick their ass every day and expect them to come back and join it. Like, if you like that, if that's what you like to do, then great. Fuck, I'll, I'll charge you. But, <laughs> <laughs> but generally, just, just find something you like I'm, and just do more of it. Create good habits. Great. I would hate you to kick my ass. Uh, Naomi, do you have someone else up there? 
Now, Simon, I've got a question for you, mate. I've been borrowing young Simon Dunn on the wall here. There's, there's two Simon Dunn's for those who oh, Congratulations on finding the second name. But um, my question, Simon, is uh, growing up and uh, young Simon Dunn exploring Oxford Street, enjoying the Mardi Gras, what was it like uh, exploring the universe or there any funny stories from those times? Uh, um, so, so, so back when I was young, it was actually called the Midnight Shift, as my mother explained, we probably weren't from the gutter together. Uh, um, so basically for me, my first Mardi Gras, I was 16 and I used to sneak up. My mum being naive, mum would realise that I'd always sneak away every year during Mardi Gras and it would come up and for me, on, like even, I used to come up on other weekends and for me at that time, I was too young to get into clubs, but I was able to walk up the street and see get other gay men. And as a 16 year old, when you play rugby, you realise that none of your friends are the same as you, just seeing proud gay men being proud gay men. And I even remember some guy, Gloria Jeans, he had big quippy hair and I'll, I'll never be able to do that. But I was like, fuck you, you're just being you. And on the night he was like, oh, we're rushing home, clear as fuck. Uh, <laughs> but and then, then moving on, 18 year old, I quit rugby threw myself into off street a lot more than we should have, but I think everybody in this room probably did the same thing. Um, but it's, it's, it's just a general learning curve of, you eventually find your place in the gay community. Um, obviously off street is gonna be the first place you think is your community. Um, myself, when I started to like go back to rugby, I was like, oh shit, it's gay men who actually like getting drunk at Universal and also like playing rugby on the weekends. Um, I think that was, Best let, like, that was the best learning curve for me here. It wasn't, it wasn't those people who were happy to roll out of medical at 3 p.m. on a Monday um, when people are coming home from work from their office jobs. So yeah, it's, been, it's been a very long journey for me on Oxford Street. And I shouldn't tell you how long, but what is it now? <laughs> no, it's 16 it's years of this street and a lot of money and put a lot of the time and I'm very grateful for that. Now, Simon, the final question this evening is, um, what do you like to do on your downtime? Uh, if you were very busy, you've got a very packed schedule, Simon, you know, like you, you've got your 20 um, uh, people that you have to train every single week and stuff, you know, they all love you so much, they're booking like multiple sessions a week, you know, can't get enough of you. Then you've got your partner time, and then you're going out for dinner, you're seeing a little movie and stuff, but you only have an hour for that week. What would you do? Speaking of partners, I can see going right through there. Hi, Jeremy. Jeremy's a big fan of mine. Um, um, downtime for me, weird enough, is the gym. Um, cross, ironically, not gym. training people at the gym, but it, yeah. having my own time at the gym, that's why I want to do cross. Is that in the shower or actually working out? Or oh. No. Um, so for me, yeah, just going to CrossFit, hanging out with my partner on the couch, watching me play. play. Oh, oh. If there was something else you would do, what would that be? Like, like if you couldn't be at the gym when you couldn't be at home with your partner, like what else would you do? Oh, big guy. Oh, would you? Oh, Simon, thank you. Simon, which is we after me tomorrow night. Look at the wicked thing, Simon. Oh, what's there? There he is. Look at that. What am I wearing? I don't know what you're wearing tomorrow night. Am I? Okay, great. Just bring a pair of red wickets. You'll be fine. Ready to go. Oh, that was us last week. Thank you. Thank you, Simon. We're not going to ask you any more questions, Simon. You have done an incredible job this evening. Yeah. My partner is here. And as Simon said, he's a big fan. We uh, were lucky enough to get your calendar two weeks ago. We need another one. All the pages are sticking together now. So the spray and white's not cutting it anymore. <laughs> Simon, you are incredible. We know we're going to do a little signing with you uh, in a few minutes' time. So how about you go off? Have a little, little bit of a break, and Naomi and I are going to give away a few more prizes oh, before you come back thank up. Thank you very much for having me, and I'd like to thank you all for coming tonight. Um, it's, been, it's been great to know we've filled the room full of charitable organisations, podcasts, those kind of things I've done over the last few months of people I've worked with. Um, so it's good to have you all here in one place. And just thank you for the work you all do for the community, the work I've been able to do with you, and hopefully we can keep, keep doing those things and She's making a lot of better place, eh? Thank you. Ladies and gents, incredible Simon Dunn!